Welcome back, comics fans. We are now at part four of this last week's new comics, bitches! Um, so let's get back to it. Okay. Um, so, Wonder Woman, number two. Uh, Azarello and Cliff Chang. Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely art. Um, this is obviously a very controversial issue um, because they seem to be doing, you know, again, some, uh, some more uh, kind of retconning with the idea of, you know, who Wonder Woman is. Um, and, you know, we have definitely, you know, the... Uh, you know, the Greek gods uh, and goddesses. Um, and, uh, you know, we've got uh, some really interesting character designs here. Um, and, uh, you know, apparently Hippolyta has changed her hair color again. And, you know, but it just, it, it does uh, get, you know, none of this stuff really matters ultimately in the end, as far as you know what she looks like or how her hair is done. Who cares? You know, let's just give me a good story, which is what Azarello does in this issue. He gives us a good story. Cliff Chang gives us some really good art, um, and they kind of retell the origin as they have always believed it of uh, you know of uh, Wonder Woman that you know Hippolyta was barren uh, she could not have children so she took uh, of the you know she you know took of the clay of the earth she formed a child and when you know and and the child was imbued uh, with uh, human properties uh, she you know as uh, Azrael describes her Wonder Woman is the perfect Amazon because no male seed created her well uh, that's the legend. Apparently, the truth is something a lot different. So, uh, you know, it does show, uh, you know, you know, again, some some wonderful art, and then all of a sudden, you know, the kind of goth chick that we see on the front here uh, is actually a Greek uh, a Greek goddess, uh, the goddess uh, Strife, um, who is sister to the god of war. Um, and while well, she tells uh, Wonder Woman, uh, she tells Diana that uh, she actually has a little bit more of the gods in her than she thought, uh, because uh, she is in fact the daughter of Zeus. Um, as you know, as the you know, as she is protecting this you know this woman who ha is is also carrying a child of Zeus. Um, she finds out herself that she is uh, a child of Zeus. Uh, whether that means, you know, kind of that, uh, you know, Hippolyta and Zeus uh, knew each other in the biblical sense. Uh, obviously, you know, see what I did there? It's, you know, it's, it's Greek gods and talking about the Bible. And <laughs> okay. Um, you have no sense of humor, you know that? Anyway... <laughs> Uh, again, you know, solid story, great artwork, uh, really enjoyed, uh, this issue of Wonder Woman, uh, you know, enjoy where they're going with it, um, that it's really not taking a kind of, you know, superhuman big threat type of thing, that it's more, you know, that has a lot more to do with the, you know, the gods and goddesses than it ever really did before. Uh, so that to me is exciting because I do enjoy uh, Greek mythology. So uh, happy with that. This is going to surprise some people that this was not my pick of the week, um, but here it is: uh, Batman number two. Since it's written by Scott Snyder, I'm sure that you were automatically assuming that hey, since it's Scott Snyder, it's going to be his pick of the week, right? Well, wrong. But it's damn close. Uh, this is, you know, so Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne, actually a little bit more specifically, uh, facing off against one of, uh, Gotham's legends, uh, the Court of Owls, um, who are quite deadly, um, and they must be, 
you know, and it's actually, you know, what's cool about this is that Bruce Wayne is fighting this guy. He's not decked out as Batman. It's just Bruce Wayne, and he is uh, still not in over his head, but, uh, you know, again, Snyder just has it right. When he sees Batman, he sees what Batman is supposed to be. That he is Gotham's protector. He is Gotham's legend. He is the world's greatest detective. You know, and this there is a tremendous, you know, there's a tremendous moment with, uh, you know, where uh, Batman has actually installed a, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, a, a photogrammetric scanner in the city morgue, so that he can have basically a holographic layout of the body. So that he can look at it and do, uh, you know, whatever he needs to with it, and then we get the story of exactly, you know, because we had that kind of uh, that kind of shocker ending in the first issue, where it looked like the killer of this man that is being autopsied was Dick Grayson, uh, because it was his DNA that was pulled off some of the uh, these uh, throwing knives, but of course that turns out to be not the case. I'm glad that, you know, Scott Snyder's smarter than that. He's not going to go down that, you know, kind of lame old road where it's like, oh, you know, did he or didn't he? No, the, you know, Batman is smart. He solves the, you know, he, he well, not solves it, but he, under you know, he knows you know, almost immediately within a couple of panels that Dick didn't do it. And Dick explains exactly how it's, you know, how it happened, what happened to him, that some DNA from this actually, from, from this uh, John Doe uh, got, you know, he, you know, anyway, just, you know, that, you know, Bruce, he's always on top of things, and, and quite literally in, in, uh, in this comic, but not on top of anybody. There's, there's no sex, actually, in this issue uh, of uh, the Bat books, or the, the Gotham City books, I should say, this week. Um... And, you know, Greg Capullo is just doing a great job on the art. Um, <clears throat> not quite as, uh, you know, as far as Scott Snyder and who he's worked with before, not quite as noirish as, uh, you know, Francesco Francavilla, uh, or not quite as, you know, kind of abstract as Jock, but, you know, definitely good within its own right. Definitely very, 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 very solid work. And Snyder just, you know, Snyder just writes the shit out of Batman, as he has been doing since he started with this title. I mean, for a guy that, I mean, literally came out of nowhere two years ago and has risen to be, like, you know, the kind of star of the DC Universe right now. I mean, Jeff Johns, I could give a shit about almost anything that he writes, except for Aquaman. Um which I'm really looking forward to the next issue of, which is coming out this week. Um, and, uh, you know, and Jeff Lemire, uh, who's doing uh, some really, really, really good work on Animal Man and uh, uh, Frankenstein, Agent of Shades. So, and especially since Snyder's, uh, you know, Sm Snyder's Swamp Thing and Lemire's Animal Man are going to essentially cross over uh, that to me is horrifically exciting and I mean that in the best possible way it is horror that these two comics are doing and it's very exciting to see these two uh, you know re and, and also I'm, I'm sorry I forgot to mention uh, uh, Joshua Hale Fialkov uh, as far as another rising star a guy literally you know three weeks ago I'd never heard of him and he did the you know he did my pick of book of the week two weeks in a row, you know, with I Vampire and Last of the Grace. I Vampire is also coming out this week, too. So I'm really looking forward to that. So um, overall, this last week was a bunch of kind of poor to good to better books. There wasn't a great book this week, uh, which is kind of sad. Um, that wasn't just something that really knocked my socks off, as there have been in recent weeks. Um, but uh, the closest that we got this week, other than Batman, was... 
unfortunately not a book that I have with me, or else I would show you the cover. And that is The Boys Butcher Baker Candlestick Maker number four. So again, we're back to the story of Billy Butcher, the story of his life. Now, this has been something that's been hinted at since pretty early on in the boys' comic, which is that something very personal is involving Billy Butcher with the, the mission of the boys and, you know, and his hatred towards soups. And it's not just because they're a bunch of depraved, psychotic, sex fiend, drug addict, uh, you know, total scumbag assholes. But they did something very, 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 very personal to him. Now, the everything, as it begins, I mean, it does begin at, uh, with his brother's funeral. Now, it's never really revealed quite how his brother died, but, you know, there's a great moment that, that Garth Ennis gives uh, Billy where he says, well, you know, the thought that went through his head, that went through Billy's head as he buried his brother is, well, now there's no one left to stop me. Except for, of course, Becky, his now his wife. Um, you know, the woman that he fell head over heels in love with, who fell head over heels in love with him, who believes in him. They're very good for one another. They recognize the strengths that they both have. And they're happy to get by just doing what they're doing. No more violence. No more, you know, of the kind of old life that Billy used to lead, even though he's afraid of becoming a father because he doesn't want to turn out like his own father. Um, because his own father is a bit of a, as they say quite a bit in this, uh, in The Boys, he's a bit of a cunt. Um, and that's the British or, you know, across the, across the water use of the word. Okay, not the use that it has in, in the United States, which is uglier, um, but whatever. Anyway, so, you know, ev everything seems to be the days of wine and roses for these two. They're having fun together, everything seems to be great, and then all of a sudden they go to Miami Beach for a vacation, and the soups are there. Uh, basically, the, uh, the seven show up there. And they both kind of look at them with disdain and, you know, kind of just like they're a freak show. And then while they're there, um, something happens to, to Becky, something that Billy is not aware of at first, but, you know, he feels, of course, in retrospect, because he's having this whole, you know, all the you know monologue that he's having, the quote-unquote internal monologue of the book, is actually an external monologue where he's talking to his dead father, uh, who's laying there in the casket in front of him. And, you know, like I said, in retrospect, it's something that I should have seen, that I should have been able to see, that, she, you know, but of course it comes to horrific life, uh, quite literally, as a baby with superpowers uh, is floating in the air with, you know, heat vision, and Billy wastes almost zero time uh, bludgeoning it to death and on the floor is Becky dead so while they were in Miami one of the soups presumably the homelander uh, has raped his wife and is ultimately responsible for her death this was an incredibly emotional issue for me. Uh, it's, you know, the most emotional that we'll ever see Billy. He doesn't come right out and cry, but there is, there's this horrific sadness to him. And it was just, it cut me right to the core. It was such, it was so heartbreaking that I couldn't help but say, you know what, this is a really terrific book and this is a true pick of the week. Um... It's a, you know the the whole series so far has been a really good read, but this has been definitely the you know the the, the top of uh, their game here, especially as Garth is concerned. So anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, you know, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, say what you got to say, comment, 
Uh, this is James Donnelly from the Seattle Gallery saying good night to all. Ave Aquivale.